next that you are familiar with. Thank you. This is John Moore, a.k.a. Johnny Litecoin, president of the Litecoin Tech Support. So can we give him a round of applause to get him up here? <laughs> Woo! I gotta start out like this. Hey, what's up guys? Johnny Litecoin here. How's it going today? It's, you guys Woo. see me on Twitter. That's how I start out all my uh, Twitter videos. But um, in all seriousness, we live in a world, guys, where financial privacy gains more importance every day that passes. Charlie was just talking about it. Since September 2001, we have seen our rights slowly stripped with the introduction of the USA Patriot Act. Although I was only in college at the time, this is something that I opposed from the start. I knew that these newfound powers would not be used simply to fight terrorism. I knew that slowly it was gonna impact the lives of every single American citizen. I mean, come on you guys, if you guys remember at the time, some of, some of you guys are babies or young, but if you guys remember at the time, how did you think they were gonna target just terrorists with this, how? This was designed to come after us. So now we have KYC regulatory requirements placed on the American people. Does everyone, a lot of you know what KYC is, but KYC stands for know your customer. And this is questions and documents and different personal things that you have to give to access any financial product. You're essentially treated as guilty before you're innocent. Every bank that you go into has a sign that says, sorry, due to the rules, regulations, and regulatory requirements of the USA Patriot Act, there is certain information we have to gather you for opening an account. Again, you're considered guilty before you are innocent. That's not the America that I grew up in. So guys, why on earth do I care about this stuff so much, right? Well, in 2009, just around the time Satoshi released Bitcoin to the world, I began my journey in the credit card processing payments business. So it started out to look like a great business. It turned into a world of censorship, funds being held, and me having to tell my customers, sorry, due to the nature of your business, we are unable to approve your merchant processing account. Even if those activities were completely legal, it did not matter. All that mattered at the time was that banks and financial institutions remained in compliance with something called Operation Choke Point. So I don't know if anybody's heard about Operation Choke Point. What this was was an initiative by the Justice Department began in 2013, and it targeted certain industries, basically blacklisted them and said, these aren't illegal, they're politically unfavorable. Let's cut off their access to b banking and financial services sector. Got worse. Businesses even suspected of dealing in these industries had their accounts also closed, and they went a lot farther. Oftentimes they went right into these people's bank accounts, pulled money out, money that they never even processed through the service in the beginning. So a lot of people don't realize, in the legacy banking system, they, they can hold your money whenever they want for 180 days. This is all the products out there. Anything that's in the legacy system, it's in the, it's in the terms and conditions. So also around this time, I was noticing that the amount of fraud in the payment system was higher than ever before. It was like a tidal wave of fraud. There was no stopping it. In the payments world that I'm in, we were being plagued by something called synthetic identity theft. So that involves taking stolen social security numbers, fake bank accounts, fake websites, a combination of real and fake data, and these people get away with a lot of money. So there was, again, there was no stopping it. It was like there needed to be pl a plug put in place to stop all this fraud from occurring. So when I was introduced to Bitcoin, I really fell in love with the concept a currency with no central authority whose transactions cannot be censored or stopped. It was a $1,000 Litecoin transaction from New York to Cali that did it for me. I'm, I'm in the payments business. I was in my credit card office at the time and uh, we went on the back end of like a block explorer and looked up all the data. I was blown away. I was like, there's a transaction ID. We just went in and got this. It was permissionless. 
It was transparent. It was truthful. It was everything that the legacy financial system is not. Being a credit card processor, we would see transactions disappear. And we, could, we couldn't even find out information on our own clients. Very, very frustrating. So finally, with Bitcoin and Litecoin, I had an answer for my clients and the general public. Use Bitcoin or Litecoin to avoid censorship in your transactions. And in the payments business, these are what we call the dreaded chargebacks. Okay? So crypto payments, and in particular Litecoin, made me realize that there was an answer to fix this broken monetary and payment system. Only Bitcoin and Litecoin had one flaw. Charlie touched about it a little bit in his presentation. Fungibility was the flaw. As much as I touted Litecoin for its use in the payments world, it did worry me that peer-to-peer -peer transactions could be flagged by an exchange or financial institution down the line. Guys, we need solutions that enable more private payments, all right? There's no getting around KYC regulatory requirements. But if we can make KYC and other nuances of this USA Patriot Act obsolete, we're essentially going to make this stuff like rules on a typewriter. In other words, it won't matter because people no longer have a need to use that system. So people always assume if you want privacy that you must be doing something bad. That's always the assumption. Well, let me ask everybody a question here. Do you want to walk around at all times and divulge your bank account balance to your friends, peers, coworkers, and the general public at all times? Of course not. No one wants that. The idea of this sounds crazy. Only with Bitcoin and Litecoin, that's exactly what you're doing. It's like that glass house that Charlie showed. You can see everything. So as, as great as all that truth and transparency is, we need to build that cash-like experience. This is what I, lo I love personally so much about MWeb, Mimblewimble. Um, we, call, we all call it MWeb right now, the implementation that's built into the Litecoin network. It gives us that cash-like experience without trading the benefits of the truth, trust, and transparency. We still want that. We still want to be able to audit the system, see the exact amount of coins that are in there, see what's going on, but we want to be able to then utilize cash in that system as well. So personally, I'm very excited. I'm all about use. I'm all about adoption. I'm really excited to see this built into the popular mobile wallets in the future. So right now, the use of MWeb, MWeb is rapidly rising. And you, it's only available in Litecoin Core. Litecoin Core, you have to run it on a computer. You're running a full node, so it's taking up some space on your um, PC. Most young people I know, they don't even have a computer anymore. They just have a mobile solution. So when we see MWeb built into these popular mobile apps, the, the use of it is really going to grow exponentially. So as censorship grows and we see more public figures targeted for financial censorship, it's going to help to spread the message about what Bitcoin and Litecoin actually offer in terms of a monetary solution. Right now, they, the bad guys, the world global elites, whoever you want to call them, they want us to think of Bitcoin and Litecoin like they're a tech stock, like they're a volatile meme, meme coin, meme stocks. They want us thinking of NFTs, pictures of monkey pictures that crashed in value. They control the media. They control everything. They do not want us thinking of this as sound money, as a tool for your freedom. That is the last thing that they want to get out there. So I always tell people, ne never forget. I people always talk about the intrinsic value. Well, it's, what's the intrinsic value of this stuff, right? The intrinsic value of Bitcoin or Litecoin ultimately comes down to the fact that in a potential dystopian future, this may be the only way to send value from point A to point B. If the world got enough like the book 1984, which I, I hope this does not get there, but 
if it did get 1984 like enough, it's maybe the only way to send a message out, a message from point A to point B. Your social credit score may not allow for that message or that payment to get out there. So where do we go from here, guys? Where do we go from here? Um, I don't want my children using money and apps that have a social credit score attached to them. I really don't. Um, we, there's no stopping this digital tidal wave that's coming. I work in payments, so I've seen the trend going digital. So a lot of people assume if you are into Bitcoin or you're into Litecoin that you're anti-cash. I'm pro-cash. I tell people I'm the most, even as a credit card processor, I always wanted people to get cash. And I tell people supporting Bitcoin and Litecoin, I'm even more pro-cash. All we're trying to do is build this cash-like solution for you guys to be able to use in the future. This digital wave is coming. They're going to release something on us called CBDCs, which is a central bank digital currency. Once this comes, a lot of people feel like it's game over. So I feel like this will be very bullish for the price, but it's not going to be good for the use of cryptocurrency at all. The reason why, CBDCs are going to be programmable money. And when I first got into crypto, I was like, oh, programmable money, that's great, that's great. This could be a tool that's used against us. So we really need to get the word out there. Um, what could we all do? We need to keep talking to people about non-custodial mobile wallets. These are super, of super, super importance. Because if we, could, if we could just make a lot of this stuff obsolete, we're on a path to our freedom. If we make the solutions so good, so robust, people are not going to have a need to go back into that legacy banking system. See, KYC can only occur when you need to go in and out of the legacy system. The Litecoin network itself doesn't ask you for your ID, doesn't ask you for your KYC. As Charlie touched on, it's censorship resistant. The payments just go. It's coming in through these tolls that we have to go through the KYC. So we really have to just keep spreading the message, keep building these solutions so they're more powerful. And again, these non-custodial mobile wallets, I can't be more adamant about this, how, how important these are. And it's, there's no stopping this digital tidal wave. It's coming. Um, you know, being in the payments world, people say, well, maybe we'll go back to gold and silver as money. Well, I like gold and silver, it is private. But how do you pay for something, even at a cash register now? Forget online, forget online. But even at a retail cash register, you, nobody would know what to, to do with silver or gold. Everything is digital. A lot of people, a lot of kids that work at places, they have trouble counting out cash for change if you give them a $100 bill. So it's all about building digital solutions. We have to embrace all this. We have to spread the message to people that Bitcoin and Litecoin are so much different than these central bank digital currencies that are coming. They're different than the whole crypto space. They're really in a class by themselves. So, you know, I used to say that Bitcoin and Litecoin, they're your lifeboats out of the system. I love that tagline. Bitcoin being a store of value lifeboat. But Litecoin, now with MWeb and privacy built into it, this is really a tool for us to fight going forward. This is going to be really needed. Um, as we go into a world of extreme censorship, privacy is only going to be more important. If there's more digital payments going around, you're going to want privacy more and more. This potential dystopian future I talked about, I don't want this to come, but if it does, you better believe you're going to want privacy in a world like that. Um, also, also, too, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of security risks that people don't think about with crypto, with crypto. So I said before, do you want to divulge your bank account balance to all people at all times? No, of course not. But it poses a security risk also for the people that are making payments. So 
Being in the payments world, we used to love setting up a, um, like a little, kind of like a table tent, we call it. It's like a sign that's by the register. And we put a QR code on it so we could advertise the business is accepting Litecoin and Bitcoin. Scan QR code to make payment. So if you were a thief and you wanted to wait outside and you knew that stagnant wallet address, you can just have a computer pulled up and see everybody that sent payments in. Now somebody might come along that had 50 Bitcoins in a wallet, maybe sent a little bit of Bitcoin over to make a payment. You're waiting outside the store. So they have 50 Bitcoins in that app right there. I'm going to rob them. So it's not, you know, it's not a safe system how it is. It's, the transparency is great. It's a truth protocol, but building these private solutions is so, so, so important. And we really got to spread the message too. It's not that people that want privacy are doing something bad. Just bring up the example to them. Do you want to divulge your bank account balance at all times? You know, privacy is, should be an inherent right for people. And I feel like a lot of that's getting lost as we go digital. They, the bad guys, like I said, whoever you want to call them, they keep doing this power grab against us. They say, no, it's digital. Now you have to do this. The KYC becomes more strict. It used to be just, oh, if you did over a certain amount, you would have to go through your KYC. Now, as soon as you go into these apps, you have to go through KYC. Um, this is a big deterrent. This is actually slowing down crypto adoption in a major way. There's a lot of people that, I'd say about a third of the people I help get into crypto, they stop dead in their tracks. They say, I'm not giving... They say, I'm not giving Bitcoin my personal information. I, and I laugh at them. I say to them, well, it's not Bitcoin you're giving your information to. It's the government. They're the ones that want it. Let me explain to you how else this poses a big, a big risk. So being in the credit card business, I always had to ask people for their personal info. Who was I to collect people's personal info? I did not want to ask people for their social security number. Where do you live so your business can process a credit card payment. The other thing is too, I had no special license to do this. For all they know, people doing this could have been convicted felons, criminals, and are we data handling experts? No. Most of the time this information is being scanned and emailed. People's emails can be hacked. Most of the data that's leaked, a lot of it comes from doctor's offices. Do you know, your doctor gets all this info from you. Who are they? Are they experts at handling data? No, nobody is. So there's a lot of stuff that needs to be fixed. Um, Litecoin is really built, something's really special is being built with Litecoin. Um, Litecoin was great before MWeb. And now with MWeb, we, like I said, we really have this special tool for our freedom. It's only getting better, it's only getting more used. So I urge everybody, if you haven't used Mimblewimble or MWeb yet, Look into it, use it, especially when it comes to mobile, but it, it really, once you use it, you love it. It's a cool tool, and it's like Charlie showed. It's like that house. I don't want to live in the glass house, and although my wife would probably might disagree with me, I don't want to live in the house with no windows either. You want to live in a house with some windows, some transparency, but then, you know what, you can shut the blinds when you want your privacy and um, go behind the wall or whatever, so... That's it for me, guys. I'll be out. Johnny Like, any questions you guys have, I'll be here uh, for the whole summit, all right? Thanks a lot, you guys. I love Litecoin. Really honored to speak here. Thank the foundation. This is a great summit that they put on. Thanks, guys. All right. <laughs>